Edmonston, St. Leonard, Athaville, Nakawick, Lake Utopia, Chipman, Sussex, Plaster Rock, Miramichi, Bathurst, Baker's Brook, Clare, St. Jacques, Port Hawkesbury, Picto, and all over St. John. That's a pretty impressive turnout. And to all the locals across the Atlantic who today and every single day stand up and defend good Canadian jobs, thank you. I wanted um, an opportunity uh, to hope that I could retire uh, from that mill and live in the same small community that I live in and be able to support my family. Um, uh, and, I, and everybody's thinking the same thing. Um, from Newfoundland to British Columbia, the forestry industry should be at the top of the three, the three levels of government um, when they're talking about securing uh, those jobs. Uh, mining has taken, has taken uh, quite a hard hit. Uh, the fishery also in the East Coast has taken a hard hit and I don't think we can afford to lose the forestry industry. There's not much left. So somebody has to secure a, a fair trade agreement for us so that we can continue to support our families. That's the end of it. You folks are the best living proof that this is more than just about sawmills and lumber. This is about maritime families. This is about pulp and paper and corrugated medium and tissue and lumber and thousands of good paying jobs that go with it. You know, no other New Brunswick industry affects as many communities as forestry does in the province of New Brunswick. That's a fact. A lot of you folks come from small communities and we're glad to have you here because this is the backbone, this is what makes the economy run in the province. So you need to know that the elected officials may be able to ignore one voice and politicians will. If there's one person complaining, they'll ignore that person. But they can't ignore more than the 500 voices that we have here today. Can I hear your voices right now? <laughs> So we have the power to make them take action and stand firm for a fair softwood trade agreement, but we have to be persistent and we have to be committed until the agreement is reached. To remove this tax, everyone can work in the industry of wood, in the forest, because it affects pretty much everyone. It affects not only the guys of the forest, it affects the trees of the forest, the guys who transport the Elle voit à nos usines qu'on peut fabriquer du 2 par 4, 2 par 6, tout, toutes ces affaires-là. Fait que euh, les ministres, je crois qu'ils devraient les, les renfermer d'une chambre, bien qu'ils donner de l'eau à boire jusqu'à temps qu'il y ait un, un, un deal de fait pour euh, résoudre ça une fois pour toutes. And I think that's what we need today. We need to do okay. And it really speaks to the fact that it's not just the lumber business, the pulp and paper business. This has broad impacts on everybody in the community. And I'm sure in all of the presentations being done today, the rallies, there's a similar story of a small business that relies on a strong forestry sector. Sisters and brothers, friends, U.S. duties are an attack on the very principle of fair trade. And make no mistakes, the decision by the United States to impose duties on Canada's softwood lumber exports is not just an affront to the principle of fair trade. It is a direct attack on working people in our country. Canada exports, if you don't know, $6 billion worth of softwood lumber to the United States each year to meet the demands of the U.S. market. The U.S. can currently only supply two-thirds of its needs. In short, they need us. U.S. landlord owners have triggered a pointless trade dispute, and now our communities are paying the price. And by the way, American consumers will pay a price too. But we're fighting back. Unifor is fighting back. And forestry workers deserve to have their voices heard in this trade dispute. I want you to know, make no mistake, that your union is going to make sure that that continues to happen. Now, what do we want? Fair deal. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Fair deal. 